Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden joined other leaders of the world's space agencies to discuss the latest technological breakthroughs and developments in space exploration at the 67th International Astronautical Congress, September 26th through 30th in Guadalajara, Mexico. At the event, NASA discussed new elements to its multi-phase journey to Mars to extend the human footprint all the way to the red planet. NASA will continue operations aboard the International Space Station through 2024. Work currently underway aboard the station to encourage commercial development of low Earth orbit, develop deep space systems, life support and human health as part of the Earth-reliant phase of the journey to Mars. In the 2020s, during the proving ground phase when NASA steps out farther, the agency now plans to send an astronaut crew on a year-long mission to a deep space destination near the Moon. They will conduct activities to verify habitation and test our readiness for Mars. A round-trip robotic Mars sample return mission is being targeted for the 2020s as part of the Earth independent phase before finally sending humans on a mission to orbit Mars in the early 2030s. On September 27th, NASA Administrator Bolden named Thomas Zerbukin as the agency's new Associate Administrator for the Science Mission Directorate. Zerbukin is a professor of space science and aerospace engineering at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. His experience includes research in solar and heliospheric physics, experimental space research, space systems, and innovation and entrepreneurship. Zerbukin's new role at NASA officially begins on October 3rd. Astronomers using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope have imaged what may be high-altitude water vapor plumes erupting off the surface of Jupiter's moon Europa. The plumes are estimated to rise about 125 miles before presumably raining material back down onto the surface. This finding bolsters other Hubble observations suggesting the existence of the water vapor plumes. It also might provide opportunities to gather samples originating from the Moon's subsurface ocean without having to land a spacecraft or drill through Europa's icy surface. Following its launch in 2018, NASA may also use the infrared vision of the James Webb Space Telescope to confirm venting or plume activity on Europa. The agency also is formulating a mission to Europa with a payload that could confirm the presence of the plumes and study them from close range during multiple flybys. On September 30th, the European Space Agency's Rosetta mission concluded with a planned controlled descent of the spacecraft from its orbit around Comet 67P Churyumov Gerasimenko onto the comet's surface. The mission, which launched in 2004 and included several NASA science instruments, is the first in history to rendezvous with a comet and escort it as it orbits the Sun. In November 2014, Philae, a small lander deployed from the Rosetta spacecraft, obtained the first images taken from a comet's surface and sent back valuable scientific data to Earth. NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards, California is celebrating 70 years of atmospheric flight research operations for the agency. Armstrong, which began its storied history in September 1946, initially focused on experimental aircraft called X-planes. In the decades that have followed, the center's mission expanded to include roles in the space shuttle program, aviation safety, and airborne science and technology advancement. Armstrong is returning to the age of X-planes with NASA's first electric propulsion aircraft named the X-57. The aircraft could lead to advances in fuel efficiency and reductions in noise and emissions. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov.